morning, Good Vienna. Morning. Thank you. Hello, everyone. So today we decided to do something a bit special for you. Today we want to show you how a cyber attack looks like, but from an attacker's perspective. And in order to do that, we chose one of our most favorite TV shows and movie series, Mission Impossible. But why Mission Impossible? And if, you know, in the cyber world, things are very complex. In order to execute a cyber attack today, you need weapons. There are very moving parts, moving technologies, and you need multi-vector attacks in order to penetrate into targets. So in 2019, we found so many great stories or uncover vulnerabilities, and we just took all the best stories, and we will give you that from a perspective of an attacker. So, Yaniv, what is our mission for today? Let's start. Okay, so I was looking forward for this part. So. You got it. All right, Red. Our mission, sorry, our mission, should we choose to accept it, will be to retrieve a life-saving, world-saving piece of source code, of course, but it is stored in one of the most secure data centers, which is located in one of the most highly guarded places on the face of this planet. Yeah. But, Yaniv, you know, if it's like the most secure and the most guarded, we just have like few weapons. It's like the two of us. It's not like uh, we need to change a plan. Yeah, uh, you see that that's where I don't exactly agree with you because okay. it's not only the two of us. Look, everyone is here, right? Okay. And today we decided to do something really special. You see, for the first time in our lives, we actually know how this presentation is going to start, but we have absolutely no idea how it's going to end. And for that, we need you. So please keep an eye out for this nice logo here. And whenever you see it, that practically means that we need you to help us decide which attack vector would you like us to use and which story would you like to hear about. Okay? Okay, so let's move on. Let's move to the game plan. So our target. Our target is the most secure place, but each target has a weak point, a weak links. So we will try to hack the branch office. We will try to hack the network of the branch office, and then we will try to move to the data center because there will be probably VPN access. And once we will go to the data center, we will try to use more weapons to exploit the data center and found our source codes. This is the method that we should use. Right, but you see, even after we got to the data center, that's not game over yet, right? Because there's a lot of servers and we don't have any permission to look in them. Yeah. Now, our source code should be in the servers, but we will most probably need to exploit these servers and then we'll be able to look around and find our world-saving pierce of source code and we'll be able to end our mission and go home back to Israel. Yeah, so Yaniv, let's, let's move on and see where is our branch office. Let's see what's inside the branch office. And we are coming with like sets of weapons that we uncovered in 2019, and we want to show you how bad actors using weapons, and you will help us with that. So Yaniv, let's go inside. Right, so we've located the branch office, so that, that's how it looks like from the outside, and this is how it looks like from the inside. So as you can see, there is like, this is a cool place, by the way, but there is like many technologies in here, and each technology can be exploited eventually. And once we will exploit it, we will have access to the network, and we will move on to exploit more things. So first of all, we have a console game. If we will exploit this console game, this is things that we did in 2019, we will take over the account, and we will move on to infect the user. Second, we have a DSLR camera that using P2P, protocol, and we can exploit this protocol to get access from the camera to the network. Right. Next, we have a mobile phone. Everybody has a mobile phone on his, on his desk, right? Yeah. But if you'll be able to get into the mobile phone, this mobile phone is also connected to the internal network, and we can, again, gain control of the network, right? Yeah. And then, finally, we have just a normal PC, but we can't just use any normal attack. We need to find something really nice. So it turns out that this PC is actually using a very popular application, WinRAR, right? Everyone using it. If we can exploit it, we can be in the computer, and we can move on. So, Yaniv, we saw all these technologies that we have weapons to exploit them. So now, let's so get now some help. It's your part, guys and girls, so we need your help. So please help us. Raise of hands. Which story would you like us to tell? Number one, number two, number three, <laughs> number four. Okay, that's a big race. What do you say, Odette? 
people don't believe us that this is real, but this is actually real. We have four yeah. stories to tell. So I think it was number two, right? Choose. Let's go for number two. <laughs> A DSLR camera. All right. So I know what some of you might be thinking. A camera? What does this have to do with cybersecurity? It just, network, yeah. just takes photos, right? Yep. But this is not just a camera. Basically, it's a Canon DSLR camera. Just to give you some background, Canon has 40% of the market share. 20 million of these pieces has been sold only in 2019. That's like a lot. And most importantly, these cameras are no longer these simple cameras. They use sophisticated things. Specifically, they use a protocol called PTP. Now, again, you must be asking yourselves, what is PTP? Protocol. That's, <laughs> that's pretty easy to explain. See, um, I'll talk over this movie. So this is how we uh, uh, did this in our lab. Basically, <coughs> PTP is an over-the-air protocol to transfer photos to your computer. Basically, uh, 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 traditionally, you would transfer the photos from the camera to the computer using a USB cable, right? This is rarely how it's done today. It's exactly. done using this protocol, which is usually differently enabled, and you can transfer your photos over the air. Now, what you see here is just we took some photos on our camera just so there will be some photos there. This is our text script. Just press Enter, no peripherals needed, and then we can take control over the camera. And basically, that's it. We already have control. This beeping light that you see there means we are actually running code on the camera itself. And now, in order to show you what can we do we just decided to ransom all the photos. But of course, we can do anything that we want. And practically, yeah, we can change payload and attack the network. It's, yeah. it's on our end. So and practically, we got hold of the network, right? Cool. So we exploited the camera. We got access to the network, right? Let's move on. Let's okay. move on. So this is our game plan. So now we act the branch office. We have access to the network. We have access to the data center because there is a VPN connection. But we don't know which technologies there are on the data center that we can exploit to get permission. So let's jump in into the data center and see which technologies we have. So what we can see inside the data center is M MMC, which is a Microsoft tool to manage Microsoft devices or activities or users and group. Second, we have PXC, which is using a WGS protocol to distribute images remotely. And this is like most used like uh, a platform for distributing images. And second, we have SQLite, which is a database that's installed in more than 1 trillion devices. It's like all over the world. So we need now your help again. Which weapon you want us to use in order to get exploitation of the data center and get access to the source code? Right, so raise of hands, please. Number one. Number two, number three. Uh, yeah. Easy. <laughs> that was easy. It's number three. OK, SQLite. So what is SQLite? Yaniv, let's jump in. SQLite is a database, a very light database, that is being installed in more than one trillion devices. And when I say more than one trillion devices, it's being installed on PCs, on laptops, on mobile on spaceships, and if you're in your toaster, <laughs> OK? And Maybe then, in your toaster, not in mine. Um, yes, you're right. <laughs> I, and and, and that gives us a lot of opportunities to exploit, meaning that even if we will exploit one place and we will not have enough permission, we will exploit the next SQLite server till we will have the permission and we can take the credentials to the uh, data center, and then we can have the code. So basically, we have one, one, one trillion options. So this is like a short demo of it. This is a server with SQLite. I'm trying to enter to this server, and I'm just getting denied. And I just ran a payload. Let's run the payload again. And once I'm running the payload, I'm having access and permission on the device itself. Some technical issues with the exploit, but you know uh, that that's real world. Then. But uh, okay, so let's move on. So now, Yaniv, we have the permission on the data center. So we have like multi-vector attacks. We move from the branch office to get access to the data center, and we are really like sitting remotely. Don't yep. remember, we are not there. And now, show me the money. All right. So let's get the source code, right? But, Odell, what but? it wouldn't really be Mission Impossible if there wasn't any sudden twist in the plot, right? I, uh, uh, yeah, right. And I our like twist it. in the plot this time is that 
although we gained access to the data center, it turns out that there aren't as many servers as we expected. And you know why is that, Oden? Yes, because our company, our target, just recently migrated their entire data center to the cloud. OK. <laughs> But you know, if I move the cloud a little bit, it's just someone else's computer, no? The cloud is just someone else's computer, okay, yeah. OK, so I guess we can export it. And you know what? Last week, we had crazy announcement. Last week, we uncovered a huge story. We took over Azure cloud infrastructure. We uncover big vulnerability that allows bad actors to take over entire Azure cloud. So yep. let's share our information here. So just a bit, if you've been living under a rock, we'll just tell you what Azure is. So Azure is Microsoft's cloud solution. It's one of the top three cloud infrastructures out there. And it has millions of users, huge enterprises, banks, hospitals, corporates, whatever, right? Name it. Now, How does a co corporate or a company work with the cloud? It works smartly with the, with the cloud, right? So they take their entire business process and spread them into smaller units, usually referred to as workloads, Work right? Yeah. And these workloads, you can take them and spread them around in the cloud, in different parts of the cloud, which gives you scalability, agility, and another supportability, uh, supportability and, and, nice all, ability, all, and all these nice words, right? And that's really cool, and cloud is a really cool place. But let's take a look at one of these mini cloud, right? One of these pods or whatever you want to one call them. This. So if you think about it for a second, you'll understand that when you run your workload, although you run your workload on this cloud, you are most definitely not the only one to do this. Yeah. Others run their workloads exactly on the same cloud. Now, this is possible due to a process of isolation, which yeah, Microsoft, yeah, Microsoft yeah. provides it. They basically isolate each of these workloads so they won't be able to interact with each other because that would be catastrophic, I yeah, guess, right? That would be a big deal. And that is, ladies and gentlemen, exactly what well. we've been able to do in our research. So basically, we broke this workload isolation, letting us break from the jail of the workload and, and infect the entire entire server, right? So now we have control of the entire Microsoft Azure server and each and every workload that will be there, ours or anyone's, yeah. will be able to see it, modify it, delete it. This is really a cloud nightmare. I hope you understand the <laughs> severity of this thing. Yeah, and now we don't have only the OS, one source code. We have like the all source code of the world. <laughs> yeah, so the source code of the world, yeah. So let's move, Yenif. Let's move on and try to sum a little bit what's going on. So that was really, really fast, but we have a lot of things that we uncover. This is how the cyber landscape is working. Weapons, 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 multi-vector attacks. So we started with a mission. We went to the branch office, exploit the branch office, go to the network, and move on to the data center. From the data center, we add technologies that we had to exploit, and not the weapons. Exploit got permissions and try to find the, the um, source code. But it was not there. It's on the cloud. It's on the cloud. More weapons. Exploit the cloud. Take the source code. So, Yaniv. Yeah, let's sum up everything. So we're very sorry that we had to use Mission Impossible as our team because, frankly, it's quite a cliche, right? But you know, this is not a TV show. It's not movie, and it's not fiction. Whatever you've seen here today, and even the things that you didn't see here today, they, these are all real vulnerabilities that we uncovered during 2019. But we are not the bad guys. We are here to find these vulnerabilities before the bad actor. There is crazy race today between bad actors, governments, and good guys. We are here to balance the race. We are here to make sure to be ahead of the bad actors and help our customers and help the world to be a much secure place. Right. And we only had 15 minutes for this session. And we're really sorry because we wanted to tell you a lot more details and a lot more technical details about this research. And if you want to hear more, you are more than welcome to come and join our CPR con just across the hall here, right? Or then and I will be there. You can get this cool badge if you come. And we surely hope to see you there. So thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you.